the point is that the group of scholars who originally got the Dead Sea Scrolls we were familiar with before the 90s were a sort of network of basically pro-church individuals. They mostly were connected to an institution in Jerusalem called the Eco Biblique, and that was connected to the Vatican. And they uh, controlled who had access to the uh, documents that they were willing to, rele to release. They didn't release, they, they released maybe 10% of what there was. Uh, and these turned up in different translations as if these were the only scrolls. And I thought the only way that you could have a serious in intellectual discussion about these things would be that everyone would have access to all the materials and everything that exists, and no, no one barred, and no choice of materials. And therefore, I felt it was absolutely essential that we got all the scrolls published, all of them. And I, fortunately, was in a position that it happened that the people up at the Huntington Library, where the scrolls originally were kept, the head of that organization, Bill, he preferred me, and then uh, he got me in touch with the... Uh, with the Dead Sea Publishing uh, Group, financed by the Bechtel Corporation and people. And then I got very close to their photographer, who was the one who took all the pictures of the plates. So I got in touch with him, and for some reason he took a shine to me as well. Don't ask me why or maybe because of the head of the Huntington Library, who really was very close to me, and uh, started bringing down all of the plates to me. And I took them over to the university and had them developed in the university uh, photographic li li library. So and then I had all the photographs. And then what were we going to do with it? At that time, James Robinson, of blessed memory since passed away, um, had retired from Claremont, but he was instrumental in releasing the Nag Hammadi materials. And he had uh, retired, but he was still doing some things. He used to come down a bit and teach for me one course maybe a year down at Cal State Long Beach just to get some more pocket change or whatever you want to call it. And um, we got fairly close, and I thought that I didn't want the publication of all the scrolls to be under my name alone, because I thought it might, in some people's mind, be too Jewish. So I thought we should have a well-known Christian scholar involved in it as well. And Robinson had published all of the Nag Hammadi materials, or had been involved in the publication, so I asked him if he wanted to you know, be part of this, and of course he jumped at the opportunity. Imagine being able to be behind the breaking of the monopoly of two very huge uh, um, repositories of manuscripts, the scrolls and Nag Hammadi. So the book came out um, under my name and his, even though honestly he had nothing to do with collecting the materials at all. But that didn't matter. It was just a, a presentation. So we were all ready to go. We had everything, you know, the photographs all taken and arranged. And both of us had published in E.J. Brill in Leiden, Holland, in case your people don't know where that is. And um, my original books came from E.J. Brill in Leiden. And he had two, some of his books. And they were very happy to go with us as the editors, or it's not editors really, but presenters of this material. We didn't do any editing of any kind. We just arranged the materials. And um, since both our names were on it, they were very happy about that. So two weeks before publication, some controversy arose at a conference in Europe, not far from Leiden. I think it was Amsterdam or near Amsterdam, somewhere but like that. And one of their reps who knew nothing about anything heard people complaining about the scrolls, you know, sort of being upset that someone was going to publish them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, part of the establishment group. And he reported back to the office in Leiden, and they got upset too. And they, two weeks before publication, they dropped the publication. It was all ready to go. It was all, it was all in its final form. 
And uh, they paid us off, not a huge amount, they paid Robinson and I off a little bit of compensation. And we had this manuscript ready to go and we were forced to do the worst thing that I ever had to do in my life, but it had no choice. I fell into the hands of Herschel Shanks, the editor of the, then editor of the Biblical Archaeological Review. Now, we were no lovers of each other for over long standing, but when he saw this possibility, he like went bonkers, if you want to use that expression. The only thing was, it was all ready to go. He didn't do anything to prepare the manuscript. It was ready to go for, for a brill. We just transferred the material over to him. The only problem was, because he wanted his name involved in some way, he added a publisher's forward, which was never called for and which he never showed me. And Robinson, who knew very little about the scrolls, he knew about Agamotti, but he didn't know anything about the scrolls, didn't know very much about the controversies in the Dead Sea Scrolls, he ran it by Robinson, who never told me and never showed it to me. If I had seen it, I would have vetoed it immediately. But Robinson didn't think anything of it. He said, oh, yeah, okay, fine, you know, gave, send it back to him, because he didn't know there was some, some sensitive uh, situation involved in these things. And in this publisher's foreword, Shanks mentioned the work of someone who was just publishing something on MMT. I don't even go further than that, because then the guy sued all of us. And this was the worst disaster of my life. It cost me a huge amount of money, all of the lawsuits. Robinson and I had to end up cross-suing Shanks. It, the case was never brought to America because the, the you know, lawsuits were in Israel and you couldn't do that for some reason. And it meant that I couldn't go to Israel again for the whole period of this, lest I be served with something else so, because I didn't want to get served by anything. I didn't, because if you're not served, you're not in it. And so all that happened was that James Robinson and I crossed suit Shanks in the actual suit. This guy won the suit, you know, hands down, in, in, as, in an Israeli court. And this held up the publication for a while and cost a lot of money. And that was a bit of a disaster. So working with Herschel Shanks was a, a bit of a disaster. The only, well, the only pleasure I got of it, well, out of it was that we cross-sued him and he had to pay both Robinson and I a min minor amount of compensation according to the Israeli court order. But we were not held responsible, Robinson and I, because we showed them we had not uh, asked for the publish publishers forward. We had no hand in it and we didn't want it. And uh, we would have rejected it out outright had I seen it for sure.